Catherine and I are on a road trip in Tassie. And right now, we're in the heart of apple country. So we're south of Hobart in the picturesque Huon Valley. Tassie is known as the Apple Isle. Yes. There's nothing new about that, but there are new varieties popping up all the time. Well, I reckon there's someone coming who might be able to tell us a little bit about that. And would you believe it? We share the same surname. Greg Z. Greg Z. <laughs> we're not related, are we? <laughs> Oh, no, I know. Could be a lot. No, we're not related. This particular Griggs family has been growing apples here for generations and developed a really new apple that's taking off. It's a real success story. We were walking through an orchard that we every year it's um it's a green block. And we discovered this this one limb that just had red apples on it. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. Every year we find something a bit different. 99 times out of 100, there's there's a reason not to go ahead with it. So this was the one out of 100 where it just ticked every single box, wasn't it? It, it sounds like you struck gold in a way. Yeah. Ruby gold. <laughs> Ruby gold! <laughs> <laughs> where did the name Ruby gold come from? First of all, just the colour. Mm. So the, the ruby coloured, ruby red skin. And then when you cut it, it's got golden flesh. Yeah. So ruby gold. And also my grandmother was ruby pearl grips. Oh, that's, oh, that's so, gorgeous. Yeah. You get the dryness at the end, it just makes you want to oh, go wow. for a sweet hit again, mm. so you go for another bite. That is fantastic. That is crispy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And they're juicy too, they're really oh. juicy. It's very popular in Asia because of the colour yeah. and the name has mm. sort of helped it as well. And the yellow flesh as well. And the yellow flesh, the, the ruby, yeah. And um, so it's, it's going well there, really well. So how far back are we talking as far as the family business? Our family has been growing apples for six generations, since the 18... 1950s yeah. or whatever it was. It was, it was the SS Apolline, actually. That, was it really? Yeah. <laughs> that is actually, that's amazing. What could you do with these, food-wise? You need to do a little bit of a, a, a savoury chutney, where they're, they're chopped and roasted yep. with yep. a few spices yep. and served with a pork chop. It sounds good to me. Good Apples and pork chop. <laughs> and pork, it's like a yeah. little dream. And because the, the sugar content in these is higher than a normal cooking apple, you can pull that back a bit if you use ruby gold. Right, I'm going to make that note then. <laughs> <laughs> One of the beautiful things about growers like Dane and his family, their packing and processing is still simple and mostly done by hand. Oh, while you're here, you may as well meet the rest of the family. This is my father, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Pleasure Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Kev. And Brett is that? Brett, Brett yeah. joke. Now I am thinking we actually could be related. <laughs> <laughs> and your apple's absolutely delicious. Those ruby golds are... Big. Awesome, thanks. I hope you're oh, having yeah. a, a few spares lying around. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh There you go. Too just many. happened to have one handy. <laughs> no, that's breakfast, lunch, dinner, morning tea, afternoon tea and dessert for the next week. For the whole crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Thank guys. you so much, guys. No worries. Bye. Bye. Right. Okay. Bye. See you later. Well, Joe, keeping up with the apple theme, we're going to be looking at some cider here in Tassie, but with a modern twist. Cider is so popular these days, made with all sorts of fruit. I mean, it's no longer just the realm of rejected apples. No, they're using like high quality fruit to get fabulous flavours into cider. What started as a passion for home brewing quickly turned into a huge business for Harry Moses. Grab a cider. How's that for a welcome? <laughs> that is the best welcome. It's Thank our you. Standard apple cider. Yeah. And a way to welcome you to our shed. My oh, first geez. super cider ever. Really? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Here we go. It's good Watch go the two ways. Expression. <laughs> could be very oh, no, quick that's interview. Sensational. I hear that you have an unusual technique for deciding whether or not the apples that you use make the cut. For yeah, your cider. drop them. Drop them. Drop yeah, them. and if they bounce, they're good. If they go splat, then they're for another cider maker. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a See? bouncer. Yeah, that's a bouncer. So that indicates it's a good apple. It should be. It was yep. only picked yesterday. Harry's taken cider to another level. We just love messing around with beautiful fruit. But it's their but cherry cider that put them on the I map. I because it was the first of its kind in Australia. Uh, and it's a, it's a blend of partially fermented cherry juice. Oh, yum. And a dry apple cider. And the blueberry comes from over the hill, true blue blueberries. Perfume totally to it. Again. Very different, yeah. Totally different again. Yeah. And how about quince cider? It's a tricky one to make. If you have too much quince, it goes to that weird hubba bubba bubble gum flavour. So this is the strawberry. If you if you have a smell oh, of that, wow. it's a lot like strawberry jam. Uh, so your nose is going to be telling you, watch out, this is going to be sweet. Yeah. Uh, but it it's does. actually quite a quite a dry cider. Okay. But I like the cherry. I really, really, really like the blueberry and the strawberry. See, I'm going cherry and quince for me. 
and then the, and it's pure form. Because it's winter, I'm thinking it would, you know, one of these would make a superb mulled cider. The Yum. cherry. What the cherry. The that? cherry. Cherry. Yeah. Cherry yeah. wins. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks you have guys. You to come Thanks and try the cider, mate. Yeah, got to come and try a little the mulled one.